The math of series notch filters helps us make a more accurate passive filter. As you know, this filter consists of an inductor, capacitor, and a resistor. The formula process to reach all the L, C, and R values doesn't take much time. The purpose of using this filter is to eliminate the impedance peak for the high-frequency driver, so the resulting impedance will match better with the crossover and its frequency response will be smoother. Consider only an LC circuit for now. Each one of C and L has an impedance, and their formulas are At a certain frequency, the impedance of L and C are equal, and the resulting impedance is equal to zero. You can call the impedances XL and XC, respectively. The main method to analyze these types of circuits is based on complex numbers, but we can get the same result by these simple formulas. The resulting frequency according to the formulas is called resonance, or FR, and is equal to. As I said, the resulting impedance is equal to zero, and it can be modeled by a closed circuit switch. So in an RLC circuit at the resonance frequency, this part is modeled by a closed circuit switch. Now place the speaker at the end of the filter. At the frequencies where the peak occurs, the speaker exhibits resistive behavior. The reason is really complicated and requires analysis of all the mechanical and electrical parts of the driver. We're not going to dive into that right now. Just model it with the resistor whose value is 7.8 ohms. The circuit is in simpler form right now. Rn is a known value and generally is selected equal to the DC resistance of the driver or a value close to the value after the peak. For this driver, I'll set it to 3.5 ohms. The resulting impedance at this point will be 3.5 ohms after filtering. Rn and 7.8 are known values and the unknown value R is calculated by the parallel resistors relationship. Now, let's go to the calculation of L and C. The filter bandwidth and its higher and lower frequency can be calculated by this experimentally values. You can divide the peak value by 2, and note the frequencies corresponding to this value, or divide the DC resistance by 0.707, and do it again. The results won't be the same, but you can try both. 7.8 divided by 2 equals 3.9, F1 is 820, and F2 is about 1930. Do these steps for any driver you want. After obtaining the bandwidth, Q should be calculated. Consider that the higher the Q, the sharper and the narrower the filter is. When F1 and F2 are very close to each other, the bandwidth is small and Q is high, so the filter is narrow and sharp. In general, we get two equations for L and C, and the result is obtained by substituting one in the other. C is obtained to be 16.6 microfarads, and L is equal to 0.89 millihenries. After that, the parameters are ready for VTWXCAD or any simulation software programs.
After connecting the filter, the peak is gone as we wanted, and the impedance is about 3.5 ohms, which is the desired value. You can design an Excel file for the formulas so that you don't have to do calculations for your filter every time. It is good to try the method on a full range speaker from Dayton models. According to the previous videos, import all the specs into Vituixcad to see its impedance response. Consider that this filter eliminates the impedance peak and doesn't affect the SPL. The DC resistance of the driver is 7.1 ohms, and this number divided by 0.707 will be about 10 ohms. F1 and F2 corresponding to 10 ohms are the peak impedance and the mechanical resonance frequency. As you can see, the result is quite smooth and the peak is gone. In this case, if we divided the peak impedance by 2 and obtained the corresponding frequencies, the result would be like this. Thanks for watching.